Hey guys, Tarkat here, and today I'm going to do a rough guide for my Azanath Chant course to carry Trixer, which you're seeing a background footage of here. I've got a tier 16 Val Temple, a Baron, and an Awakener level 5 uh, Cirrus kill for you. Haven't done Awakener 8 yet just because I'm still unlocking all my watchstones, but this has been a really smooth build, and if you watch my channel, you know I play basically only course to carry. I've been wanting to play this for a really long time, and the main reason I haven't been able to play this version of the build before was because of the Azanath's Chant helmet being so rare. So, if you're wondering, like, how is my build functioning, what's the point of this, and what is the Azanath's Chant helmet, Azanath's Chant is a upgraded prophecy helmet, which triggers, triggers socketed spells in your helmet when you attack with a bow skill. So, I have a four-link soul rend in my hat, and you can see that every single time I press my Corsica carrot, I shoot out a bunch of soul runs. Now, last league, I was primarily using Arrow Nova to boost my clear. Corsica carrot is a very well rounded skill, um, but its clear can sometimes feel a bit iffy if you're not stacking loads of additional arrows or loads of AoE. With the Azanus Chant helmet, the soul rend does all of the map clear for you, and you can just focus on having a really nice single target Corsica carrot, and it's just really good synergy. I keep GMP and Soul Rend for everything other than like some tier 16 Conquerors when I can be bothered to swap it out and Cirrus I swap out the GMP for Avoid Manipulation. Um, for single target you can see that I just have the Corsica Arrow, the Soul Rend and then I have currently a 5 link Essence Strain on R. You don't need to have the 5 link Essence Strain there. I just like it because it adds a uh, nice layer of sustain to the build because Essence Drain actually has a pretty uh, potent heal attached to it. Uh, with the amount of duration that's in my build, um, it lasts for 6.2 seconds, I believe. So you just press it once every now and again and it's up for the main duration of the fight. It adds like an extra 250k dot damage. My Caustic Arrow does 1.1 million dot damage with the maximum wither applied uh, to bosses. And the way that I apply Wither is purely through Withering Step. Most people use a Wither Totem. Wither Totem is a very easy way of maintaining full Wither stacks. Personally, I really don't like Wither Totem. Um, it's something that I've gone backwards and forwards on over the last couple of leagues. And I always end up just dropping it. The thing about Wither Totem that I don't like, and this is just my personal preference. I find even with placement speed investment, it's just too slow. And it's quite common that it will randomly get you killed when you're like on a very scary boss. You go to drop the Wither Totem and the animation time it takes you to drop it, you get hit by a random like die beam or a slam that you're not meant to be in. So I often found that on very scary bosses, I would just have very bad Wither Totem uptime. Um, whereas Withering Step is instant and instantly implies a level 21 is seven stacks of Wither. Um, with the amount of duration I have in my build, my Wither lasts for, I believe, 7 seconds. So, when Withering Step's got a cooldown of uh, 2.4, I think it is, as long as I'm just pressing it every 7 or so seconds, I'm constantly refreshing my Wither, so I very easily maintain um, 14 or 15 charges. You can also get Helm Enchant, so it applies more, you can scale the duration even further. But just from being a trickster, it lasts for a very long time, linked with increased duration. So that's what I do. Now, what is this build good at? What is this build bad at? Uh, why am I not using Toxic Rain? Why is it not Essence Drain? Why is it not a Pathfinder, Raider? All the questions I get constantly about this build. Um, with how it's built with the Azanath's Charm, it's a very well-rounded and smooth uh, mapper, and it's a pretty solid bosser. Um, it may not look particularly tanky because you're like, well, Taki, you've only got 5.3k life and 600 energy shield. So like you've barely got 6k EHP. I'm using Kintsugi and I'm using Wind Dancer. And because I'm a trickster um, and because of my Pantheon choices, I have a lot of like layered mitigation against dots. So Kintsugi reduces incoming damage by 20% if I haven't been hit recently, being within the last four seconds. I'm a dodge and evasion based build, I very rarely get hit at all during maps, and if I do, the Kintsugi cuts it down and Wind Dancer has the same effect as Kintsugi, 20% reduced damage taken if you haven't been hit recently. There's some diminishing returns there, but basically I very rarely, if ever, get one shot, 
Uh, my character is 94, halfway to 95, and I believe I have 14 deaths on the character. Most of those deaths came from me practicing uh, Cortex. Uh, one death on my first Cirrus because I face planted a die beam. And then there's been a couple of me walking into detonate dead boxes. Um, this has been a very safe build. It is hardcore friendly. If you're playing in hardcore, you just pay slightly more attention and you would build. Uh, you would focus more on your gearing. There was a very awkward period with this character where I didn't want to invest any more currency into it. So from about 80 to 93, I didn't change any of my gear and I had loads of just like bad 40, 50 crafted life stuff. So, you know, if you actually like really cared about min maxing everything and going for proper life rolls, you could get close to about 6k life even with the Azanath chant. And um, if you wanted to be tankier instead of being trickster, you could do this as a pathfinder. If you were playing this build um, in a trade league where you had access to a lot of items and you knew this was going to be like the one build you were going to min max on, I would recommend Pathfinder over Trickster. The reason why I'd recommend Pathfinder over Trickster is you cut the five uh, chaos damage nodes at the start of the tree and you go Divine Flesh. Um, you can also do this as a champion, um, which is another good option, and I root right next to Duelist Start. I do something cool with a Thread of Hope, which I'll show you after this Cirrus kill. Um, so I skip a bunch of Duelists. But you've got a lot of options if you want to go tanky with it. If you look at the, like, uh, Peewee Ninja leaderboards, you'll see a lot of Pathfinders, you'll see a lot of Champions, and you'll see a couple of, like, Tricksters and stuff. You can even do this as a Raider and be 100% Evasion capped. The problem with doing this as a Raider, though, is the damage does drop pretty significantly. Um, when I was looking at like different options when I was comparing ascendancies, uh, Trickster did like 35% more damage than a Raider and like 15% more damage than a Pathfinder. The Pathfinder is much tankier though when you start comboing stuff like Divine Flesh into the build. So I feel like Pathfinder you can afford, like the DPS loss. Raider, I'm not too sure about that. Now keep in mind that from the footage you're seeing here, I'm only on a plus three bow with a level three in power. Um, I don't have a level four in power. You can get additional plus two levels on your bow. And I also have a plus one, not a plus two amulet. So you can push the damage much higher. Um, if you had the higher damage investment, then you'd be more comfortable playing a lower damage ascendancy for something which is more defensive oriented. Uh, that being said, Trickster is still a very well-rounded Ascendancy and a fairly tanky Ascendancy. Um, it has the Ghost Shroud stuff going on. You'll notice that whenever I take a big hit, my Energy Shield bounces back up. I get some extra Spell Dodge and I get really nice uh, Sustain. You can see that with my Wind Dancer Kintsugi and my Damage Over Time Mitigation from Trickster, I'm able to dive into Storms to force Cirrus to land faster. Um, I have a lot of just mitigation against Dots. Um, it's also really nice if you're doing like Uber Elder against the big sucky suck he does or like Shaper Beams and stuff. So would recommend. I'll let this clip play out, just the final bits here. And then I will uh, go through my tree, my current gear. I will do some very basic crafting advice. Um, but I have prepared a Google Doc which has got some rough like step by step how did I craft each thing. Keeping in mind, we are playing in Harvest League, and Harvest is very broken when it comes to crafting. So all of the crafting stuff is based on Harvest crafting. So if you're watching this after Harvest League, take the crafting section with a grain of salt. But there you go. So, what gear do I have? And what's my skill tree? And all of that good stuff. I'll quickly do skill tree because it's very basic, and then I'll show you my gear. Go through here, boom, 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 shoot up while leveling, grab no witnesses. This is incredibly strong. This gives you elusive while mapping. If you're just bossing, you could cut these four points. For ascendancies, since people always ask, I went uh, prolonged pain first, then I took escape artist afterwards. I then came down, grabbed hunter's gambit. I skipped this. I grabbed strength and int while leveling. Acro phase acro, takes survivalist if you need the resist, come down life. I went straight into ranger, primal spirit for more strength and int. Druidic right for more mana sustain and flask sustain. Grab wind dancer, grab life. And then keep coming across, if you need more resist, grab cloth and chain. 
filling golem's blood here i've got a medium thread of hope this is a really nice spot for it so this medium thread of hope gets these life nodes here saving me one two three four points so it's i save four po travel points i then spend two points down here and still net save two points this gives plus one to minimum frenzy charges, 8% chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill, 8% increased damage per frenzy charge. So even on like bosses like Cirrus where you're not um, able to like kill enemies to sustain frenzies, this still gives you one minimum which is 4% more damage and 8% increase so it's still very good damage. Uh, this gives plus one to minimum endurance charges, endurance charge generation on kill which is really nice for mapping, and 8% increased damage per endurance charge. Also since endurance charges give you physical damage reduction and um elemental resistances you could also think of this as four percent increased ellie res so yeah you don't need this for the build it just makes it a lot neater uh, once you've filled that in you just fill in what you need at this point if you need life fill in the little life nodes uh fill in a range of the hunted you can grab jewels and for jewels just want life uh increased damage over time uh damage over time multiplier i've got a bunch of jewels with just like flat stats on them because i needed them Ideally, I would have one good strength roll somewhere on my gear, and if I did, I'd be able to save this one point here. Grab Method to the Madness. I like having capped Chaos Res. I actually have 78 max Chaos Res. Um, if you haven't got much Chaos Res early, I would probably recommend traveling through these two nodes. I really do think that with the way that GG bounces the game, you want to have, at the very least, positive like 30 Chaos Res, but if you can cap your Chaos Res, you'll feel a lot tankier. So let's go through my gear. So this is my bow. This is like the most bog standard plus three bow you can get. You can get much better. I can show you an example of a bow that I started crafting. Um, where is it? Here. So uh, if I wanted to like push this bow further, there are like levels of bows. So this is just a plus three bow with crafted chaos damage every time multiplier. You do not need the projectile speed. You do not need the attack speed. They're just nice fluff. Um, this could be an example of a good upgrade bow. So this is plus one to level of Socrates Gems. The Poison mod, that's just what I happen to Regal. And it's got the uh, suffix damage over time multiplier. You can have damage over time multiplier as a suffix and crafted chaos damage over time multiplier. If I wanted to keep playing this character, I'm basically done with it now. At this point, I would multi-mod this bow and I would craft plus two to level of support gems and chaos damage from multiplier, and this would be a very big DPS increase over my current bow. I just don't want to play this build anymore, so I don't want to invest any more currency into it. If you wanted to push up the bow either even further beyond, um, you could use uh, fossils, and with fossils you can get additional levels to strength and dex gems, and it's possible to actually craft a plus five level bow. In my helmet, again, just the Azanath chant. Uh, soul Rend, GMP, Efficacy, Controlled Destruction. I don't have a level 21 Soul Rend. A level 21 Soul Rend would be a big DPS increase. For single target, I swap out the GMP for Void Manipulation. You don't have to do this. It's just something you can do if you'd want. Um, this is a pretty nice quiver, which seems like intimidating. But these are actually really easy to craft. I made this today, and it cost me 30 Chaos for the base, and... That was basically it. Everything else was just augments from the garden. So the way that um, I crafted this is just very basically. Um, I bought an eye level 82 hunter quiver. I alteration rolled in the I, until I hit damage over time multiplier. And then I just uh, spammed it with augment chaos, augment life until I filled it all in. I would like to keep going to get higher life. There's a more detailed guide in my Google Doc. Also, one thing worth mentioning, uh, the increased projectile speed on this is actually uh, bad for my bow because it makes the soul rend travel faster, which reduces like the tick rate on enemies. This is nice for something like toxic rain, but the proj speed is actually like negative for my bow. It does make the essence rain feel a little bit smoother, but it's kind of a wash. This is my amulet, just a plus one amulet. This looks very fancy but isn't actually that crazy because again you can just force plus uh, chaos this is still missing chaos uh, damage of time multiplier and plus one two dexterity skill gems on here again i've got a detailed version of how to craft these in the google doc below very basically um i was trying to get plus one dex and i was going to later org the plus one chaos onto it 
I happened to hit the int, the life, and then I regaled the all res, and I thought, sod it, this is good enough, I'll just keep this, because again, I didn't want to push the build any further. One thing worth noting, you'll see that I allocate dynamo, and I'll quickly show you why I allocate dynamo. So, if you were pushing this character and you were in a trade league environment, you'd want minus mana cost on your rings and your amulet. Um, you can see that I don't really have issues too much with mana, but because I have dynamo and I have steel skin on left click, every single time my steel skin procs, it full um, restores my mana. And it just means I never need to worry about any mana concerns. It's by no means mandatory. I could get more damage by anointing um, aspect of the eagle which gives uh, increased damage over time, some movement speed, some flat life. This is a very cheap early anoint, since it only costs two green and one amber. Alternatively, you can anoint corruption. The increased wither effect is very strong, um, since you wither is the main source of your... It's like this main multiplier of your damage against bosses. This is what I would recommend for most people. You can also corrupt uh, piercing shots if you're really desperate for pierce. However, you can get pierce on a quiver, and because of the Azanath's chant, we don't really need to stack um, Pierce because the Azanath is all of our map clear. You can also craft Pierce on Hunter Boots if you get Hunter Boots. Also worth mentioning since I'm hovering over my boots, you do not need the Leech Enchant. You would much rather have Movement Speed or Mana Regen if you've used a skill recently. I just happened to hit this and I didn't want to roll over it because I'll use this on a different character later on. I have a Despair on Hit Ring, which is how I'm cursing. I just got this from Delve. Um, you can get uh, Despair on hit from Hunter Rings. All of our good stuff comes from Hunter Influence, by the way, so keep an eye out for Hunter Influence. People say, why don't you use Witchfire Brew, Taki? I hate Witchfire Brew with a passion. The only times I think Witchfire Brew is, like, excusable to use is if you're playing a Pathfinder or a Scion Pathfinder. But even then, I don't like it. It has a very tiny AoE. You don't need Despair while mapping. You only need Despair while bossing. You can't interact with it at all. It uses up a flask slot. There are better flasks you can use. And also, uh, a really nice thing about having Despair on hit, Soul Rend hits. So Soul Rend despairs everything for me. You don't need to worry about it. Do not use Witch Vibru. It's a trash flask. Uh, otherwise, I've just got Life Resist. Nothing fancy here. I've got no increased damage. You could have a minimum Frenzy Charges. You could have minus mana cost. Lots of things here. My gloves, uh, Chaos Damage over time. Life, just very basic Chaos Res Res. Nothing that fancy. You could get attack speed here. This character is kind of like 7 or 8 out of 10 on min-max. It's got like pretty good gear, but not like insane gear. This is enough that I can keep this character. It can clear all the content in the game, and I don't want to put more money into it because I want to move on to other projects. For my belt, again, it's really nothing fancy. I'm missing like you could get increased chaos damage. You can have crafted increased damage. It's just life, some resists, and some flask effects. And then obviously the Kintsugi. Um, if you six link to the Kintsugi, you'd move your stuff around. I've currently got my Vile Grace in the floating socket here. You don't really need this Essence Drain. You could drop this Essence Drain. And to be honest, I, if I was playing this character for longer, I probably would um, drop this Essence Drain. One of the advantages of dropping the Essence Drain and just having like a random four link like utility set up in here is you could then like spam double corrupts into your Kintsugi and then you can maybe go for like maximum resistances, increased damage, reduce damage taken from crits, so on and so forth. I do really like having that health sustain. If I was going to drop the Essence Drain, I'd probably replace it with like an Enduring Cry Urgent Orders second win setup. So you've still got that nice health sustain coming in that way. I'm not using um, Flesh and Stone on this character. I'm not using any Aspects on this character. If you had a good Aspect of the Spider item, that would be a further way of, of boosting your damage. I would then uh, rework my Auras a little bit. You can put an Intuitive Leap here pick up charisma um if you had a charisma and an enlighten or if you just had a level four enlighten and you had minus mana cost rings you could fit an aspect into this build um if you wanted more defense you could do aspect of the crab which would be pretty good and uh yeah i don't use cost of jewels i don't think you need them cost of jewels if you went that route i'd probably go for avoid ailment stuff um and being completely ailment immune would be very nice however as I said, if I was playing this in a trade league going full investment, I would play this as a Pathfinder, and Pathfinder would be ailment immune anyway. But if you have any questions on this build, let me know. And to finally finish the video with the Mathal style MTX, we are using 
the Judicator Helmet with the Shadowstalker Body Armor, Dark Prism Gloves, Cult of the Apocalypse Boots, Havenwood Bow, and the Judicator Weapon Effects. Uh, also, make sure you've got Steel Skin on left click, so whenever you're walking, it just automatically triggers. And that's another thing which makes this build surprisingly tanky. So you've got an effective EHP of 6k, and then you've got this 2k absorb up nearly all the time. So you've got like 8k EHP, Kintsugi, Wind Dancer, all of that good stuff. Very tanky character, and yes, I leveled with Corsa Caro all the way from level 2 into maps. But yes, check out the Google Doc. I'm Taki, have a good day. Bye-bye.